female character, which I have, Claire Hart, who's kind of, in a way, a kind of navigator. So a main character gives, has given me, that Claire Hart has given me a way of navigating perhaps really um, otherwise intolerable things, because I know she will make the right judgment. She's a much better person than I am, I assure you of that. Never steals anything, never lies, never, 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 never pretends fancy houses are hers. <laughs> So in a way, that she has given me a way of asking and answering the, the questions that I've had about South Africa, which is why it's so awful mm -hmm. to women. Why, why does this happen? Why, is it, why are children victimized in this most appalling way? Why is it that um, so hard for good men to be good in a country that's so violent? You know, it's... it's, she, and it's a genre that enables you to ask those kind of big moral questions in a way that's kind of hidden because you're moving the reader along at such a pace, hopefully, that they're distracted <laughs> from the fact that you're taking them down a moral equation. So in the, I'm busy with the fifth book at the moment, but in each one, I sort of worked the series. I wrote this one just on chutzpah, the first one and lied to my publisher and said I had a whole series planned out. And then I had to quickly, if you do tell a lie, you have to have a method of making good your lie. <laughs> so I worked out the other ones that I wanted to kind of do. It. It's interesting to me working on the fifth one is that the kernel of all those stories has stayed with me because they really were things that I wanted to answer. How do you write about the motto of the 12 year old girl in literary fiction you know what I mean it's very difficult and crime fiction is a way of kind of going into those dark places and doing those dark things um, I must say that after my, one of my uncles after he read like clockwork he phoned me and he said my how do you know all these things <laughs> and I said what he said the six bits <laughs> and I said Neil um Three children, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was 40 then, I said, I'm like 40. You know, there's like a little bit that I've figured out. So I have to, every now and then I think, please go, my relatives don't read it. There's some writers who just kind of make things up, but I am a bit of an empiricist. I come from a very scientific family, so they're all doctors and scientists and vets. And so you have to, like, know your facts. And there's actually, I've come to realize, very little that policemen can do to prevent crime. They can do crime control, but, you know, if, if someone's going to beat you up, they're not there when it happens. South Africa is an extremely violent place. I mean, one of the things I was looking at in Gallows Hill, which was my last book, is trying to understand <coughs> the origins of the violence that we have. I think, okay, it's, you know, the, maybe it was apartheid, maybe it was before that, and then I went right back in Gallows Hill and looking at the legacy of slavery. Mm -hmm which really formed the Cape, um, where you had a social structure in which half the population of Cape Town were not considered human because they were owned. Mm -hmm. So you think, okay, well, there's the rocket science for you. But this, is it just a... Stories kind of pick you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the thing that I think a lot of people like crime fiction is that the story just moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean, it's a pacing. Yeah. And there's something, um, I mean, all of you, I'm sure, were read to as children. And you had that once upon a time there was a princess and there was a dragon and there was a this and there was a social disruption and then it comes to closure. It is a fantasy genre in that everything comes right. You know, it's an escape from reality. Um, so you get that. But then the, for me, the story picks me. And if I have to spend a year at least writing a book. So you have to be gripped by the story. You can't take a sociological thing. What you do is create that context, which is going to be why South African crime fiction is different to British or Swedish, when they never kill each other. They just drink themselves <laughs> to death. <laughs> yeah. We've got Scotty's restaurant in Pimpley there, down the Longship Star. We started off, once we left the bush, we started off a little wee company called Fresh Ideas, which was more deli, doing lots of catering. And it just grew like topsy, really. We started off doing markets, the Montessori school market, and the Sedgefield market, with chutneys, relishes, and pickles, and ice cream. And Scott, being Scottish, can't really speak much Afrikaans, but he can tell you all about room aids and confect. And then as it grew and grew, we um, were asked to open up a restaurant, which we did about two years ago, and it's called Scotty's. Um, as one lady said to me, 
oh, I really love your logo. Have you got a Scotty? I said, yeah, I do. I've actually got a big two-legged Scotty in the kitchen. She said, shame. What happened to his other two legs? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.